In case you didn't reach this video from a social media post about the problem, let's take a step back and fill you in on what happened. After having the Orange Storm Giga for some time and producing client work for over a month without any uh, notable issues, there was a significant problem. Partway into a print job, an error appeared on the web UI stating that the connection had been lost with the print head and to restart the firmware. Going into the print shop, I was immediately struck by the pungent smell of an overloaded circuit board and melted plastic. I rushed to kill the power to the Giga. There was no open flame, but the damage to the print head was immediately obvious. As you can see in these photos, there had been significant heat, burning, and probably some degree of fire. Enough that the print head connector cable was all but disintegrated, with charring on the bus board, PTFE tube, and the white mounting plate above the head. At this point, I had no idea how much damage had occurred inside the head, what the source of the overload was, or whether this had damaged any other electronics, such as the motherboard. With the head removed, let's take a closer look. The connectors are completely fused together. There's barely any wire remaining. The Bowden tube is scorched, and there's carbon on the filament release lever. The rest of the head looks pretty good. Uh, the hot end and nozzle assembly may have taken a little damage. The silicone sock appears torn. I don't know if the camera will capture it, but the color of the brass is off, like it overheated. The cover has two hex screws, one on each side. There doesn't seem to be any heat damage or soot inside the cover. That's a good sign. There's a blower on either side of this assembly. Buried behind this shield is our culprit, but we'll get to that in a minute. This back plate is used to attach the print head to the printer and is held on by three hex screws. It looks like the damage was limited to the upper area where the cable connector sits. In order to take the connector board off, we have to disconnect all the wires. Be careful and don't pull the wires out of the Molex connectors. Really, you don't want to have to fix those. I'm really happy Elegoo didn't make it harder on the end user to service this by hot gluing the connectors like some manufacturers do. The clips built into the connectors are plenty, and if they weren't, the maker should reconsider their choice of them instead of using hot glue. Once the wires are off, we can take out the three hex screws and remove the connector board. All things considered, this doesn't look as bad as I was expecting and could have been a lot worse. This line seems to be magic marker from the factory and not soot from the failure. Okay, finally it's time to talk about the actual cause. These two blowers are for cooling the extruded filament, but behind this grill is a fan that cools the heat break above the nozzle. Looking at this close up of that fan, we can start to see the issue. These fans pull air from the backside with the label and push it out to the front. In this installed orientation, that means air is pulled up from the fresh print directly into the fan, which has no protective grill. In about a month of around-the-clock printing, you can see how every little wisp of filament hair was sucked up to clog the cooling fan. And, well, we all know what happened next. So what do we do about that? In a moment, I'm going to explore a modification I have in mind, so stay with me. But the simplest thing to do is frequent regular inspection and cleaning. 
You put this printer together, so you know taking the head off is only four screws. Once you have it out, grab a flashlight and look up inside. Take tweezers and remove every bit of hair and debris you can see. Turn the fan to dislodge hidden strands and bring them around to where you can reach them. Keep at it. Be diligent in finding everything that may have been pulled inside, which can also include pet hair, considering the Giga sits low to the ground. I have an idea for an experiment. My printer is awaiting parts from Elegoo before I can try this. I make no promises if you want to try it, but I would really love to hear your results if you do. What I want to do is pull the print head further apart, flip the heat break cooling fan over, and reinstall it. The entire assembly of the two blowers, this cage, the LED, and the Z sensor is one unit held in place by four small Phillips head screws. Once you remove the four screws, you'll notice there is a small post between them. Gently lift the metal tab over the post to remove the blower and cage assembly. The fan is held by four hex screws and standoffs. Take note, the fan wire is in the upper left position as we are holding the assembly. After turning the fan over, we must rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise to keep the wire in the same relative position for reconnection later. At this point, simply reverse the disassembly steps to reassemble. Obviously, I can't install this print head. This is where you would put back the connector board, mounting plate, and cover. One side effect of this fan reversal to watch for is whether it affects the heating of the nozzle. In theory, air rushing up from the bottom or down from the top should have about the same effect, but only time and running the machine will confirm that. Thank you for sticking with me through all of this. I know it wasn't the most exciting video on the internet. Uh, please let me know what you thought of it, as well as your real-world results if you try this mod. I am not a professional content creator or YouTuber. I hope you consider checking out my store and services because it's those real-world working experiences that make these videos possible.